Welcome to Module 18, Going Under the Ball Screen. A team will typically choose to go under screens when the ball handler is a poor shooter. This way, they can contain the drive and force low percentage jump shots. Here are some key points to think about when going under a ball screen. As always, please allow us to set the stage for this module. In this first example, we see the ball with the highlighted player, and we will see this player come in to set a ball screen. As we continue and the ball screen is set, let's notice a few things. First, the screener's defender here has dropped off, leaving a gap for the on-ball defender to shoot through. This is common when the screener is not a strong shooter, since you can afford to give them a bit more space. The player is also in a low show, protecting the paint, which is important because if you think back to the slide in the introduction, the main reason a team would go under a ball screen is because the ball handler is better at driving to the rim than shooting, so the low show position of the screener's defender serves to stop that. When we continue, watch how the on-ball defender moves as quickly as possible around the screen, giving the ball handler no time or space for an easy shot or drive, and the screener's defender here likely understanding that the screener here is not a shooting threat, giving him a bit more space and opting to protect the paint. Moving to the end of this possession, we see as the ball is swung around, the blue team chooses to fight over the screen this time, something you can learn about in the module Getting Over the Ball Screen. In the last example, we saw the screener's defender drop off of the screener to allow the on-ball defender to shoot through the gap. In a case where the screener is a good shooter, however, the screener's defender should use a push-up or jam method to allow them less space to pop and shoot. As the highlighted player makes a pass out to the top of the arc, we can see the screener coming in and the screener's defender staying tight to him, basically instructing the on-ball defender to go around them both. Again, we see the on-ball defender moving very quickly to get around it getting his hands up, and shutting down any drive or open shot opportunity for the ball handler. We can also see the screener's defender understanding that the screener is a scoring threat, staying tight to him, and not allowing him space to roll. So, if you're the screener deciding whether to jam or drop into a low show, here are some things to think about. In this example, we see the ball with the highlighted player. As he squares up and then makes a pass, we can eventually see a ball screen being set by this player. Continuing again for a moment, we can see that the on-ball defender has chosen to go underneath it and is now much deeper than previous examples. If a team is smart and notices that the defending team is going under their screens, what they will often do is set them lower and lower on the court in order to give themselves closer and easier jump shots. So, your team should remain aware of this and either not allow those types of screens to be set or make an adjustment to start fighting over them. Let's finish up with one more. As the highlighted player moves to his left and sets up the ball screen, let's pause here and mention the importance of being able to adapt on the fly. The blue team has been running a ball screen coverage of going underneath the screen. But it's pretty clear here that the on-ball defender is not going to get around in time. In a case like this, an emergency switch should take place. It also wouldn't be a bad idea for this player to slide up further into the gap to take up space in the lane. We can see the switch doesn't take place, and the blue team will now have to scramble to get set. So, this shows the importance of being ready to make spontaneous adjustments to the type of ball screen coverage you're using when appropriate. Please move on to the lesson to work through what we've learned in the video.